出国那个什么就是农山戏嘛。啊、uh, ，item number two, call attention notice. Three George B. Lundo MLA to call the attention of the deputy chief minister in charge P. D. D. Work Road under Rule 54 once of the Rule Procedure and Conduct of Business to the new item published in Rupang dated 16 October 2020 under the caption Here Jurip Kiseng Bhalang Bat Ka Nahaya Ka Jinking Dwar Kusui Sri George B. Lundo MLA please Honorable Chairman Sir Out of your set I'd like to thank you for admitting this very important call attention Notice under Rule 54.1, the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business, pertaining to the caption, here jurip ki seng malang bat ka NHAI yang ka jingking dua raksoi in Rupang dated 16 October 2020. Sir, the bridge that we are talking of is the dua raksoi bridge across the Umiam River on the Shilong Bypass, sir. And from the Lat Umroi Junction is around 35 to 36 kilometers. And this road is a very important connection for the entire 47 kilometer stretch of the Shilong Bypass. So this bridge was constructed under the NEC program, NEC supported scheme started in 2004. And subsequently with the construction of the Shilong Bypass, this bridge was taken over by the National Highway Authority of India and it is learned that due diligence was done to examine the structure, to examine the strength of the bridge. Prior to the uh, Nahai taking over the bridge from the State Property Department and corroborating it along the Shilong Bypass. Now, sir, with that background, we also understand the very importance of the Shilong Bypass, how it has served the state. It is a prime asset of the state, an infrastructure that has done away with the long hours of traffic jams that the, that the people of the state have faced. Four or five hours of traffic jam, especially during the winters, during the uh, time when the tourist uh, season is there. And it is also a pride of a state, sir, where a lot of people have come from across the nation to appreciate this very stretch of road. So, with that effort that has been put in by the government, at the same time, not only augmenting the physical infrastructure in the state, we are also looking at the convenience that has been brought to people who travel to different parts of the Northeast through the Shilong Bypass, carrying goods and essential items, and at the same time, facilitating our, the traffic movement towards Jainty Hills and also for movement of goods within the state of Meghalaya, sir. Now, sir, I stand also to appreciate vigilant citizens, the NGOs that have come forward, who have been very alert to bring out this subject. At the same time, going to the bridge and going underneath the bridge to see that the beams that have been constructed have cracked. And I also had gone with the officers from the Pluty Department and uh, I appreciate the Chief Engineer National Highway for his prompt response and other officers who have uh, supported in this effort to alert the state government, to alert the department. At the same time, the district uh, administration of Riboy coming out of notification and an order stopping the trucks from above 10 metric tons to ply along that bridge and alerting the Deputy Commissioners of East Cass Hills and uh, East and West Jainty Hills not to allow the trucks to further come from that particular stretch. So that is also in uh, support to the efforts that have already been taken by the National Highway Authority to immediately go to the bridge, see what can be done, and at the same time uh, stopping the uh, people from uh, utilizing the bridge uh, on the entire uh, two lanes. Uh, so now it has become a single lane to minimize the traffic movement at the same time, not allowing both uh, uh, lanes to be utilized at the same time in order to, to uh, uh, prevent any kind of casualty. So, the sudden dilapidation of the bridge, the structure, how it has crumbled suddenly, 
when the lifespan of the bridge is expected to be at least 20 to 25 years. And with that background that I have uh, presented before this August House, where the Nahai had already done the structural analysis prior to taking over the, the bridge, and at the same time, also uh, facilitating the, uh, the construction of the road, the entire stretch with the bridge on it. Another bridge also was taken along with this one, sir. So one smaller bridge along near the boundary of Umed village, as we know. So that, these two bridges are there. Now, sir, the cause for sudden deterioration, why the structure has crumbled? So, as per my discussion with uh, PLD officers, we've had a tour of the Public Accounts Committee towards South West Garo Hills, and from there I came to learn a lot about overloaded trucks. Now, the trucks have been designed to a maximum capacity, and their optimum capacity, it also links to the tire pressure. So, if the tire pressure is more, then the added pressure adds on to the weight of the, of the vehicle, and the, the road cannot withstand against its design because of the overloaded trucks and the additional weight that the vehicles carry. So, if we say that the, there must have been structural faults, constructional faults, or construction faults on the Dorsford Bridge, I have done an analysis of the entire Shillong Bypass, 47 kilometer stretch, and we have also seen that the entire Shillong Bypass is also destroyed. Sudden crumbling of the entire Shillong Bypass. And I really appreciate the, uh, the company that uh, uh, does the maintenance and repair of the Shillong Bypass. No other road in the state, sir, I can proudly say, that can meet up with the efforts that have been put in to repair and maintain the Shillong Bypass since uh, the uh, road has been opened up for traffic. But that maintenance also cannot cope up with the kind of tire pressure, with the kind of overloading of the trucks that were applying to the Shillong Bypass. Now, the Shillong Bypass and its deterioration, along with the Dorsal Bridge, has been an exploitation of a few, where the greed of a few, they have totally destroyed. This, seemingly being supported by the inactivity and the casualness and the lack of responsibility of the transport department. The transport department has its way bridges before the start of the Shillong Bypass from towards, uh, from Gentiles, coming from Gentiles, sir. Because that's where from the, the maximum uh, uh, of the overloaded trucks have been coming. And because these trucks have overloaded, now the entire Shillong Bypass has been destroyed. Some may disagree, but then just two days back, another news item came in uh, a local Khasi daily, reporting now that the Omyam Jorobar four lane has also been destroyed. If you drive down to Guwahati now, that pristine asset of a state, the entire four lane has been destroyed, sir. All because of these overloaded trucks. Now, I have some traffic data, sir, which I have uh, collected from some friends uh, uh, who've been looking at the uh, maintenance and also the repair of the entire Shillong Bypass. Maximum number of trucks that are plying, especially if we take July 2019, the total number of uh, trucks that were plying, uh, total number of vehicles that were plying during the month of uh, July 2019 was 1,14,383. Like These were the total number of vehicles. And two truck, two axles, 19,622. Three axle trucks, 6,777. Heavy construction machi machinery, 26,420. And oversized vehicles, only seven. So, come to September 2020, because of the lockdown, truck, two axle, 12,729. Three axle commercial vehicle, 3264. Heavy construction machinery, 17194 and 10 oversized vehicles. So averaging sir, around 1,500 to 1,700 trucks were applying 
along the Shillong bypass. Now that is a meager number of uh, trucks uh, that are applying uh, 24 hours. So with only few trucks, how much of this, how can they destroy the Shillong bypass? How can they destroy this bridge? The only logical conclusion would be the overloading, which is corroborated by the destruction of the Shillong bypass and also the destruction of the four lane. So, now, because the dark soil bridge is not being, cannot be utilized fully, now there is a diversion of traffic now. All the trucks that were supposed to come from Guwahati to Shillong bypass and onto the different parts of the northeast, now they are all coming back to Shillong, sir, to the pre Shillong bypass days. And all those trucks coming from different parts of northeast and Gentiles again plying through Shillong, sir. So, we are being drawn back to history, sir, where the Shillong city will be now suffering because of the greed of a few who have exploited and utilized maybe the incapacity of the transport department to check the overloaded trucks. Now, the, the, our roads, our pristine assets have become victims because of the greed of a few. Sir, complaints, complaints have come of extortion. There are videos that are uploaded in the social media that trucks now are being <coughs> even extorted also. You should see the parking there at the Lat Umrai because of the failure of the, uh, because of the uh, destruction of the structure of Dark Sweet Bridge. Now all the trucks are, plying, are being parked there at Lat Umrai. Becoming an inconvenience for me, for other commuters, for the entire people of Eastern Riboy, for the entire people of Riboy, and the ones who are moving towards uh, Assam, all the trucks are playing there. Now, these trucks are also piled on into that uh, small overbridge, that uh, overhead pass that we are seeing there at Lat Umroy. All the trucks are parked there now. You should see the heavy machinery, you should see the amount of uh, heavy trucks. So, some trucks, in spite of the orders that have been issued by the Deputy Commissioner and the uh, checks that, that have been put in place, some trucks are still plying at night, sir. Some trucks are still plying at night along this long bypass, across this dilapidated Dwarfsut Bridge. So full checking is not being going on. The commitment is not there. So, there is also a theory, maybe an allegation that the Nahai was supposed to construct a new bridge. When the Shillong Bypass was constructed, a new bridge was supposed to be there, but then the Nahai did not construct the new bridge. They took over this old bridge from that was constructed under NEC. People are asking, why did the Nahai not construct a new bridge? Was it part of the DPR? Was it part of the LOA? And why was it not it constructed? Was it withdrawn at the last moment? What are the reasons? Now, sir, the transport department should be pulled up. This is all because of the failure of the transport department, sir. The destruction of the Shillong Bypass, the destruction of the four lane is all because of the failure of the, of the transport department. And now PWD has to answer for all their, uh, yes, sir, the uh, lack of responsibility and withdrawing, withdrawal of duties. So, we need to come with short term and long term uh, perhaps plans. Uh, how to take, how do we, we prevent any kind of catastrophe to happen? Whether these trucks that till, till now because of the lockdown and the corona uh, pandemic regulations, the odd and even uh, movement of vehicles is still applicable in the state, of, in the state capital. But then these trucks, they are allowed without or even uh, uh, regulations. Farmers are suffering. Their produce are not being allowed because or even regulation is still there for them. For uh, sumos, that regulation is still there. But then what about the trucks? We should see, sir. All these things are happening because it is a collective effort that the government should put in. I won't put the entire blame on the department, sir. So, I, we have also been uh, had the uh, we had the privilege of being briefed 
by the uh, consultants that are working on the DPR for expanding the Shillong Bypass and bringing in the four lane. Now, sir, we need to expedite that part because uh, it's been a year now and uh, the pandemic has again prolonged the efforts. So perhaps this should be expedited, expedited sir. And the expansion of the Shillong Bypass is much needed considering the number of accidents that have happened, considering this new uh, uh, update and status of the uh, deterioration of the Dwarf Street Bridge. At the same time, sir, the fragility of the Omiyam Dam. Uh, uh, the Honorable Deputy CM, I would like to appreciate him for having the patient hearing whenever I met him and updating him on the uh, status of the Omiyam Bridge. Now, with that background and the lifespan of the Omiyam Bridge being over, now all these trucks are coming and perhaps we will see another victimization of another pristine asset of the state that provides electricity to the entire state and also augmenting the efforts of the government from time to time for the power supply. Sir, I feel that a committee should be put in, a high level committee should be, looked, uh, should be put in, sir, concerning Bring in the efforts of transport department, PLD, police, district administration. Everybody should get put their heads together now, sir, because it is a matter of security for the state. It is a matter of uh, protecting the physical assets of the state, our prime assets that have been our, our pride and joy. At the same time, perhaps we should look, that, look at the fact that maybe we can regulate the movement of these overloaded trucks. If there are non-essential items, sir, it's better that we stop them for some time. Economic activity may suffer, but then what is more precious is the lives of citizens of the state, what is more precious is the Shillong city and its uh, traffic regulations and the traffic jams that people are suffer going to suffer, the pollution and especially the Omiyam Bridge and its, uh, uh, its lifespan, sir. So therefore, sir, with these submissions, I uh, look forward for a positive response and a collective response also, sir, from the state government pertaining to the uh, Dwarfsfoot Bridge, the entire Shillong Bypass, the four lane, and also the traffic movement towards Shillong City, and especially to keep in check the overloading, uh, the overloaded vehicles that are applying on our roads. So with these few words, sir, I resume my seat, sir. May I request Honorable Deputy Chief Minister to your please. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, Deputy Speaker, sir, at the outset, I'm very thankful to the Honorable MLA from Umroy Constancy, Mr. George Lindor, for bringing in the call attention to notice regarding the newspaper caption here, Jurip Ki Seng Bhalang, Bat Kanahai Ya Kajinkeng Dwark Soy. Sir, first of all, I would like to thank our Honorable Local MLA from Roy, who has highlighted few important issues. And I would like also to tell him and to assure that those issues raised by him is noted down by me, by my officers, and then accordingly we will see we will examine what can be done for the interest of the movement of the traffic in that particular uh, Shillong bypass and also for the safety of our people in the state. Uh, sir, the Jinking Dwark, 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 Dwark Soy was constructed by the PWD way back in the year 2000, uh, 2008 and the scheme sanction was from RITF 12. We got the sanction from RITF Nabat 12. And the sanctioned amount was in the last part of 2007. 2007. And 
work was started sometimes in the month of uh, January 2008 and ultimately the contractor so allotted the work. He completed the above bridge on the 22nd 12, 2009. Sir, prior to the spring of 2014, NH40 from Guwahati to Shillong and NH44 from Shillong to Silsha passes through the heart of the city Shillong, which is overpopulated and congested. These highways constitute the only surface access to Mizoram, Tripura, besides connecting the, the, the Barak Bali of Lower Assam, uh, uh, Brahmaputra Bali of Lower Assam, to Barak Bali of the Kasha region of Assam. Good trucks traverses these highways daily, carrying goods besides coal, limestone, mine in Meghala. In addition, commuter buses and vehicles also plying through this route, rendering these existing two-lane highway no longer capable of handling the overgrowing traffic. Then, sir, the alignment of the Shillong bypass starts at 61.80 km of National Highway 40, Guwahati Shillong Tamabil Road at Umyam, Barapani, and terminates at Maurankeneng at 35.10 km of NH44 Shillong Jiwai Road. Alignment passes through Rib 6 for a length of 23.276 km, including Jinking Duark Sui and East Castles district for a length of 26.4 km. The total length was 49.676 km. Originally, the Shillong bypass was proposed for double lane road. The land acquisition estimate for construction of two lane Shillong bypass was sanctioned by the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, New Delhi, on the 18 7 2000, amounting to Rs. 863.70 lakhs. Accordingly, the state government during 2004 acquired the land required for the bypass with an average width of approximate 24 meters. However, in 2005, the Government of India approved for implementation of two-laning Shillong bypass by the National Highway Authority of India on BOT basis under Phase A of SARDP Northeastern States. The existing road of the Shillong bypass was handed over to Nahai on the 1st December 2010 for its implementation with a cessation period of 20 years, including three years construction period. The work was completed in the spring of 2014. Sir, on seeing the reports from the local newspaper, the officials of Nahai inspected the Umtro Bridge on the 15 10 2020 along with the representative of the concessioner and also all local NGOs and during the inspection it was observed that there are cracks in all the three guiders in U shape and almost in the same line. Then again, Nahai official inspected the bridge on the 22nd, 10, 2020, along with the SE NH PWD road and they did the NDT non-destructive test and core cutting test. And this test was ultimately sent to IIT Guwahati and also to the technical expert team of National Highway in Delhi.
So waiting the final outcome, again on the 4th of this month, 2020, I convened a meeting. I convened a meeting where the project director stationed in Shillong of the Nahai also attended the meeting and ultimately, sir, State Beauty Department and the Nahai, we have decided to take some temporary alternative steps for ensuring the smooth flow of traffic in that particular portion, in that particular portion. And now the proposal was sent to the ministry as well as the Nahai authority that a subway be created immediately and this subway is known as steel bridge steel bridge in bracket we call it technically Bailey bridge and this has to be started immediately for the temporary relief of the bridge that is the uh, that is the that is the status right now and also sir i've already uh, instructed my principal secretary Piludi as well as secretary Piludi along with the as uh, chief engineer national highway to update or to review the status of the following up of this decision we taken on weekly basis on weekly basis so i understand the concern of our honorable local mla and this is also the concern of the government and even the people who has to transit from this particular road i think government is taking all efforts to make sure that temporary alternative is in place at the earliest possible sir the second point raised by the honorable member from umroy relating to the diversion of the traffic right now those heavy loaded vehicles government has issued an order those loaded heavy vehicles now they have to divert via shillong city and we already kept even the timing and the timing is from nine o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the <coughs> morning on daily basis and uh, instruction has been issued to all the concerned district administrations to make sure that the order is followed and adhered to accordingly. Then when we come to the lifespan of this uh, uh, Umyam, Umyam, Umyam Lake Bridge or Umyam Dam, we call it Dam, because the lifespan of this particular approach or bridge is more than 50 years. However, I received a technical report from the MECL where from their end they have already indicated that the maximum capacity carriage who's supposed to ply over that or over this dam should not cross 40 metric tons. It should not cross 40 metric ton. Any loaded vehicle should not carry beyond 40 metric ton. And again, this order will come out maybe today from the MECL. They will issue the order and also jointly with the government. We will make sure that all the loaded trucks should abide by the recommendation made by the technical expert from MSL and also the state beauty and the government, the department concerned, has to 
comply accordingly. So, sir, uh, the other points raised by the honourable member regarding the uh, the overloading, uh, I just wanted to clarify here. As far as national highway is concerned, in fact, this road is being maintained, monitored by the national highway. It is not the responsibility of the state PLUD or the state government. In case if there is any damage, Nahai has to take care of all repairing costs or repairing uh, uh, activities, whatever rises, they have to do it. Of course, again, I had a meeting recently with the RO from uh, uh, from from Guwahati, along with the, the the senior officers of the National Highway. They met me again in, in in my office. I raised this issue of damages that has happened all along the Jorabat up to not only Jorabat, up to the border of Megala, up to uh, up to the border of Assam, Barak Bali where the road condition is so bad and they have already assured me that repairing work will be started very soon as we all know due to the uh, pandemic that has happened all the repairing work which was supposed to be taken up they could not do that and now we have also relaxed the relaxation has taken place as far as the SOPs protocols, particularly, particularly for the uh, repairing issues of the uh, national highway connecting other states in the northeastern region. So, sir, with this, uh, with this clarification, and uh, I would like to again, once again, assure the honourable member and the members of this August House that. The issue of reconstruction or repairing or rearranging the temporary alternative is now in the offing, and I'll make sure that this has to happen as early as possible. And also for reconstruction or maybe for realignment, that may take a little time from the uh, national uh, highway authorities, but. We will pursue it aggressively to make sure that the Shillong bypass is again back to original one. Thank you, sir. Yes. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, I thank the Honorable Deputy CM for the extensive reply and also highlighting us on the efforts that have already been taken by the state government to take care of the Darsuri Bridge, the Shillong Bypass, and also to restore the traffic movement uh, to various activities, especially here to the creation of a subway, which we have been told that a steel bridge has been proposed and uh, they have taken up with the ministry. And uh, this will be a welcome step, sir, a steel bridge. But uh, at the same time, sir, uh, I'll, in the concluding part, I'll uh, uh, submit. The duration uh, needs to be minimized, sir, because <coughs> considering the constraints that we are seeing in the bridge now, uh, in spite of the efforts that have been put in, maybe, and the regular monitoring, especially the weekly monitoring that has been put in through the uh, executive, so we require maybe some more speedy uh, intervention so that we will be able to restore the uh, normal sea to the Shillong Bypass. So, uh, here, sir, the Omiyam uh, Dam where the load-bearing capacity of 40 metric ton has been suggested by the MECL. So, 40 metric ton is the uh, load that has been indicated, but as per the officials of the PLD, we also have to look at the axle axle load that each and every truck can carry, because that links to the tire pressure. If this 40 metric ton is being carried by a, a truck, that doesn't have that load bearing capacity nor the axle load uh, within the uh, as per the uh, NHAI norms, then we will see the destruction. A 40 uh, 
uh, metric ton truck uh, load, if it is being carried by, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, 10 uh, axle or maybe 8 axle truck, that perhaps will not put much pressure on the bridge. So we're looking at the tire pressure. Sir. So therefore, the destruction of the Shillong bypass, I again submit, sir, through, these are all true to the technical submissions and uh, uh, discussions that we had with the preliminary officials. The tire pressure is something which we need to look at. Just measuring a truck, if it is a two axle truck, but then it's carrying maybe uh, twice its load bearing capacity, but 20, 20 tons, the tire pressure will put additional load on the bridge, will put additional load on the roads. That's why we see the destruction, which in fact is the responsibility of the transport department to check. So that's why, sir, the lifespan of the bridge, even this steel bridge that they are proposing, and also the movement of traffic to Shillong City will have serious implications if the load of the truck, the, their tire pressure, and the lo their load bearing capacity is not kept in check, which uh, in the duration of the reply, I uh, maybe it's found uh, a bit, uh, it's missing, sir, because I obviously understand it's coming from the state building. So regarding the maintenance of the uh, Shillong bypass, sir, yes, uh, mm. it has been uh, being done, Honor and uh, I appreciate. Honorable sir. Uh, you have to get clarif uh, clarification only, if sir. you have any. That's why, but sir, the tire pressure that I've been, uh, I've been speaking of, and also the efforts that are being put in need to be linked because that is where we will be protecting these assets also and also uh, support the efforts that have been put in by the, by the State Police Department. So that's my submission and uh, final request, sir. With these few words, sir, I again thank the Honorable Deputy CM and the government for the efforts. Thank you, sir. Thank you.